Good day, everyone. John Cagle, Senior Functional Consultant, Dynamics 365 for Western Computer. Today, our presentation is about lead and opportunity routing. We want to systematically move open leads or opportunities to the correct owner, whether that be an individual or a team. And this will help you with efficiency in managing your sales processes and the marketing information that's been given to you. So our agenda today then is simply to introduce these topics define them to some degree, then we'll jump into the software and see what it looks like in real life. I'll circle back with some further notes to conclude the session. Key takeaways for today, we can use rules and conditions for leads and our opportunities, and these can be routed to individual users or teams based on these rules or conditions. So we'll look at some examples in just a second, but the idea is we want to be able to efficiently move records to the appropriate user to take action. We want to reduce the time spent on assigning leads or opportunities. That process of should this lead go to Joe or should this lead go to Mary? We want to ensure leads are assigned and that some leads do not fall through the cracks in any way. And then we have the opportunity to balance the lead or opportunity assignment based on a variety of factors. So we'll get into that in these definitions to come. As we work through today's presentation, keep in mind this little demonstration scenario that I've set up. I want to be able to route leads that have a lead source option value of web versus partner or referral or other values in that option set. In addition, I want to decide where to send leads based on the estimated value of the lead, whether it's greater than $20,000 or less than $20,000. So that's my scenario. And the process is going to be that we're going to create a segment with some overall rules. And I'll define these in just a moment. And then we're going to refine assignment rules based on that segment and additional specific rules. The components we're talking about today include those segments, assignment rules, seller work schedules, and seller attributes. These are all the things that we can factor in in making lead and opportunity assignment easy. I'll define them. First of all, segments allow us to create groups of leads or opportunities by defining different conditions for each segment. For our demonstration, we have segments such as leads source webs, or in other words, leads from the web. And here's a representation here of creating a segment called leads from the web with a description and the record type is lead, not account, contact, opportunity, or quote, which are available to you for other segments and other purposes. The value then that I'm using within this particular segment is a condition that says, any lead where the lead source equals web should be part of this segment. And you'll see how that works in just a moment. Assignment rules then include a segment. Typically, you can put additional rules into the assignment, assign the rule to individuals or teams, groups of individuals, if you will, and then we'll also look at the distribution method for a lead if it's taking advantage of the rule, how it's assigned to specific users within that assignment rule. So I have two examples here on the screen, and one is called leads from the web. This is an assignment rule where leads from the web have an estimated value more than 20,000. And then I have a separate rule to accommodate the leads from the web that are less than 20,000. So we may have some users in our scenario that are better able to handle those high value leads that come in and others that might be ramping up toward that ability to handle those kinds of leads and close them successfully. In the mix are seller work schedules. And we'll cover this briefly at the end of the demonstration, but you can actually distribute leads based on taking advantage of knowing what the seller's work schedule is, whether it's their Outlook calendar or whether it is their CRM calendar. So availability to handle the next lead in the queue could be based on those calendars, one or the other. And then last, we have the ability to route leads based on a particular attribute of the seller. For example, I have an attribute defined here, which says that the budget process 
has reached a place where the person we're selling to will be in a will-buy situation rather than a may-buy situation, as an example. So that's an attribute that you can set to say, whenever we see this particular value on a record, like a lead, then we're able to say, hey, it's going to go to a particular user. With that being said, let's jump into the live and trial environment here and see if we can make some sense of the definitions that I've given to you. So here I am in a trial environment in the Sales Hub app. Before I actually create a lead or two today, let's take a look at the settings and further refine the definitions that I gave you just a minute ago. First of all, we talked about segments here in the Sales Insights settings. And one of the segments that I've made for demonstration purposes is leads from the web. Let's open that up. First of all, this is a segment defined for the record type lead. And it actually has a couple of assignment rules underneath it or assignment rules that are taking advantage of this segment. If I come back to the initial tab here for this interface, you can see that this particular segment has a condition of lead source equals web. Again, differentiating it from other values that would be in here. So if I hit edit for a second, the other values that we see in that option set are advertisement partnered, the out of the box values that come with the customer engagement sales hub app when you load it the first time. So let me go back here. We didn't change anything. And then you can see the other segments that I have. I have another segment called all incoming leads. That's going to take advantage of any of the leads that are not otherwise taken advantage from another segment. So I can use this particular segment and set up assignment rules based on it also. That gives you a little bit of flavor then of setting up the segments and how they work. I just have one condition in the one we're demonstrating today, but I think that will be enough for you to see what we're doing. Underneath that segment, I actually have two assignment rules, as you saw. These assignment rules are grouped by the segment that they're under, and you can see I have an assignment rule called leads from the web greater than 20,000 and leads from the web less than 20,000. So let's just open the first one here and see what we're talking about. Here's the name. And then the second step when I'm setting up an assignment rule is to say, should it be about all incoming leads? No, we want it to be about specific leads and the leads that are in this segment called leads from the web. Remember, I have that segment. The difference here in the assignment rule then is to say, take the condition of that segment and add additional conditions to further define it. And so what I've done, I've said, hey, for any particular lead where the estimated value is greater than $20,000, I'm going to go to step three and assign those leads to either specific sellers, any seller, a specific team. And then we mentioned briefly sellers with matching attributes. So a seller, again, may have an attribute to be able to handle a certain industry or a certain territory or a certain group of leads in some way defined by the fields that are on, in this particular case, the lead form. Remember, the assignment rules are about leads or opportunities. I'm just giving you a lead scenario for today just to try to keep it simple. So I've said specific sellers, and then when I came to this menu, I have the sellers that are available to me that can be assigned the leads with these rules. And I've just chosen two, David and Alan here as we work. Certainly I can assign more, and I'll show you what those users look like in just a moment. Then the fourth step is to distribute the leads. So a couple of quick definitions here pretty straightforward or intuitive. One is round robin. So if David or Alan have capacity as leads come in that meet this condition, first one's going to go to David, next one's going to go to Alan, it's going to go to David, next one's going to go to Alan. On the other hand, you could say load balancing. So if David has a capacity of 50 leads and he's only assigned, say, 48 
and Alan has a capacity of 50, and he already has 50, well, David's going to get the next two based on load balancing. So we're going to make David equal Alan and then go from there. In addition to distributing the round robin or load balancing, we can consider the user's work schedule, again, either their CRM calendar or their Outlook calendar, and we can also consider their capacity. If you want to manage the capacity for users, we can get at it from here. We can also get at it from the team value over here, but um, go ahead and close this record. I didn't actually make any changes to it. And now we're going over to look at the capacity for Alan and David and then Jeremy and Mark, et cetera. By the way, the users that show up to assign capacity and work with capacity are based on the security roles of the user. And so what I've done is basically said, I can assign leads to anybody who has a security role that's about sales. So sales manager, salesperson, et cetera. Back to the assignment rules for a second. I also have an assignment rule leads from web less than 20,000. And so let me just show you what that looks like. It's actually very much the same, except for the fact that I said the estimated value is less than 20,000. And I'm going to choose two other sellers, Jeremy and Mark. So greater than goes to Alan or David, less than goes to Jeremy or Mark as we work through this. So that pretty much shows us how we're setting up the segments and assignment rules. Let's go test it out. So again, I just have a kind of a vanilla view here set up for demonstration purposes uh, of leads uh, created today. And I'll just create a new one and put something like this. I'll say less than 20K and I'll put this character in here who works at this wonderful company and leave it at that. I'll come over here though, I'm gonna say, remember we're going to assign leads to the owner based on a source and an estimated value. So let's just put say 12,000 in here and save this record. Now I have a new lead and it's still me, the system administrator demonstrating to you, still me, the owner of this particular record. But if we wait for If we wait for a moment or two, we see that the owner has changed as I refresh the record to Mark Hanna. So remember, Jeremy and Mark are handling the web lead source leads that are less than $20,000. If we were to create another lead with the same values here, we would see that one go to Jeremy. On the other hand, if I put in a lead for, again, I'll just use this example, say greater than 20,000. And again, this character's buying all kinds of stuff. And let's go over here and say again from the web, but the estimated value is say 45,000. We're going to save this record. Again, the owner is still the creator of the record for a moment or two. We'll refresh the record. And you can see that's gone to David. So remember, David and Alan handle the leads that come from the web that are greater than 20,000. And then we can go through that process again just to prove it out. David has that one. We're using the round robin system for assigning. And I'll go this, like this again. And just to prove this out one more time, we'll go ahead and set the lead source to web. The estimated value, let's just choose something funky here, 61,000. We'll save this record. And the last one went to David. So as we refresh this, we would expect this to go to Alan.
and it can take a second or so for that to refresh, but now you see that the owner is Alan. So that round robin worked for us. The values that we use in the conditions for both the segment of the assignment rule and the additional condition of greater than or less than 20,000 was applied as we entered new leads, regardless of how they were entered. If they come in through some type of power automate flow or other methods, direct import, whatever the situation, these rules then get applied as the lead is created. So just to wrap up our presentation today, leads or opportunities can be assigned using these assignment rules. These rules can take advantage of a user's schedules, like the CRM calendar or their Outlook calendar, in assigning these rules, in addition to the fact that you can use the round robin method, or we could assign capacities and make sure that we load balance the assignment of those leads or opportunities to a particular user or to users on a team. And then last, rules can be applied using user characteristics, like a particular user can handle leads from a particular industry, for example, or they're competent in handling leads for a particular territory or state or geographical situation, what have you. Well, I thank you for your time today. If you do have any questions, please contact Western Computer with the information that I'm showing you. Have a good day, everybody.